This is Jim Bergman with True Tech Tools and yesterday we had a chance to go over a basic overview of the Testo 310. Today I want to walk you through a couple of the productivity features in the 310 including the ambient CO test, the draft test, and the uh, gas pressure test or the, or the digital manometer that's built into the instrument. I'll show you how all those are used and how we set them up and how we use the instrument to record the data. Uh, so we're going to start with the ambient CO test and the first thing we've got to do to do an ambient CO measurement is to get the instrument calibrated in fresh air so let's go ahead and we'll do a warm up outside. Alright so one of the first things we want to do is calibrate the analyzer to fresh air so I'm going to go ahead and turn the analyzer on and we're going to let the analyzer just go through a warm up and this is really one of the first tests that we want to do before we even really enter the building or do any other combustion testing is the ambient CO test. So the instrument takes 30 seconds to go through its, its uh, calibration procedure and after it goes through the calibration, we're going to go ahead and turn it to ambient CO. So we've got to give this another 10 seconds. We'll turn it to ambient CO and then we'll go inside the building, uh, make an ambient CO measurement to make sure that we're safe to work in the environment. So now we're at the end of the warm up period here. What I'm going to use is the left right arrow key. I'm going to get it underneath the house setting on here. And you can see it's, and I'm just going to hit, uh, after I'm underneath the house here, I'm going to hit OK. And you can see it says ambient CO. I'm going to go ahead and push start. You can see it's reading zero parts per million. And now we're going to go into the into the building and see what our ambient CO actually is. This is a, really a good practice just to start the analyzer up, get it configured like this before you even walk into the building. Once the analyzer is warmed up, you can push stop. You don't have to have it running when you walk in, but you do have to have it calibrated in fresh air before you start testing. All right, so now that we're in the interior space, I'm going to go ahead and press start on the analyzer. I want to hold the probe in a vertical position about uh, about chest level. That's where you want to be with the probe when you're doing an ambient CO test. And we want to do a walk to the building or walk to the house or anywhere we want to suspect we might have CO. So when I push start here now, I'm going to give the display a few minutes to react. If there's any CO in the air at all, what we're going to start to see is the meter starting to show an ambient CO reading. And if we had an ambient CO reading above nine parts per million, that would be obviously a call to action. We'd have something we want to look at right away. Typically, if I see ambient CO even one or two parts per million, I'm going to do an investigation to see where that source of CO is. But this is how you do the CO test. Uh, after we're sure that we don't have any CO in the space, we push stop, and that's going to record that CO on the printout of the meter. So we're in the ambient CO test mode, and we've sure there's no CO in the space. And now, let's say we want to do a draft test on our furnace and make sure that we have adequate draft before we do our combustion test. So what we're going to do next here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push the left right arrow key and I'm going to toggle that over to my draft reading and I'm going to push start and it's going to go through a five second uh, stabilization period for the manometer. You see right now it's, it's uh, the probe here, I have it out of, the, out of the draft and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get a reading on that. We'll make a reading for draft and then we'll record it on the meter. Make the draft reading, all I got to do now is, you know, I want to be downstream of the elbows here so Usually after the first turn is the ideal location and I need to be far enough away from the draft diverter that I'm actually going to measure the draft pressure because right here at the draft diverter is a neutral pressure zone. So if I'm too close to the draft diverter, I may not read the actual draft. So I have a hole punched in here. I want to hold it perpendicular to the stack and you can see right now I have a draft reading of about 0 .05, 0 .04, 0 .05, which is perfect for this type of appliance. I'm going to go ahead and push stop and I'm going to record that draft reading and now it'll be on the meter when I go to take the combustion test. Okay, so now that we've measured our ambient CO, and we've verified that we have adequate draft, the next thing we may want to do is check the fuel pressure on the gas furnace. And the manometer that's built into the Testo 310 is more than adequate for doing both. Uh, obviously it's got the high resolution range for measuring draft, but it also can read pressures up to 16 inches of water column. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure the instrument to do that. All right, so we're in the draft screen right now. Let's say I want to go in here and measure pressure for the gas furnace. You have to actually go through a small configuration of the instrument here. So I'm going to push the left right arrow again, and I'll pull that and you'll see it's flashing plug right here. And it's flashing plug for a reason, because what we have to do next is we have to take the cap off of the particulate filter, and we actually have to plug the gas path. We have to plug the gas path because we don't want the natural gas to pressurize the fuel gas cells. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop off the back cap and the back cap when you pull it off here will probably have the plug right attached to it. So I pull that plug out of the way. 
lift off the particulate filter and I'm going to put this plug right inside the gas path and plug it. There's a storage place right here alongside that that this will go back into when we're done with it and it'll capture in the cap again when we go to pull it out again. So I'm going to plug that hole right up, put the cap right back on the back. You don't put the particulate filter back in there so you can see that the plug is in the gas path. You leave that out, set it in your case, and now we can go ahead and get a pressure measurement for a gas furnace. So 310 comes with some silicone tubing and what we're going to do is we're just going to open up that silicone tubing, get it spread out here and the first thing you want to notice is the tubing has two diameters and one of the diameters is simply designed to slide over the probe shaft so I'm going to take and slide that tubing over the probe shaft, it's a little snug, just slide it over, be careful not to pinch your thermocouple or damage your thermocouple when you're doing this, slide it over the probe shaft and it's on there good so we, we're more than adequate tightness for pressure testing on a gas furnace. So I'm going to go ahead and set that down. My other end I need to hook up to your own brass connector and now I can go ahead and connect it to the gas furnace. I'm going to push start on the meter. It's going to go through a zeroing and it's going to be now calibrated for the high range and it's 0.0, .0 inches of water column. Notice now it's reading in tens, hundreds of an inch and not in uh, thousands of an inch like it did for draft gone through the calibration process. Now all we have to do is turn on our gas pressure and we're coming up here now. We're at 3.56 inches of water column and now if I want to record that reading or maybe I want to adjust it down I can adjust my gas burner but when I was done I push stop and that reading is now locked in. Now for any reason I want to retake that reading you know maybe it's not the reading I want maybe I want to change something I actually have to shut the burner off and the only way to re-zero this is obviously I have no gas pressure now so I can just push start again it'll go read through the calibration procedure again it'll re-stabilize the manometer and now I'm re-ready to take the reading as soon as I turn the gas back on see it's going to read again and when I push stop now that reading's recorded now that we've made all those readings, they're all locked into the meter. And if I go back to my combustion test by hitting the left right arrow, now you can see I have P2 inches H2O, that's my fuel pressure. If I hit the up arrow again here, I get my CON diluted, which is calculated during the combustion test, my O2, which was done during calibration, temperature of the internal of the instrument, my CO ambient, which is now at zero, my draft, which is 0 0.063 and then back to my fuel pressure in the bottom. Alright so now we've gone through, we've got our ambient CO reading, I've got my draft reading, I set my fuel pressure and let's say I want to go in now and do the combustion analysis because all those things are recorded and locked in on the meter and they'll print up when I do my printout. So now all I have to do to put this back to combustion analysis is slide off the silicone tubing. I'm going to go ahead and take the plug out of the gas path. There's a storage place on the side here I'll tuck that back into. I'm going to reinstall my particulate filter and pop the cover back on the back and I'm ready to do my next test. Now that we've made all those readings, they're all locked into the meter and if I go back to my combustion test by hitting the left right arrow, now you can see I have P2 inches H2O, that's my fuel pressure. If I hit the up arrow again here, I get my CON diluted which is calculated during the combustion test, my O2 which was done during calibration temperature of the internal of the instrument, my CO ambient which is now at zero, my draft which is 0 .063 and then back to my fuel pressure in the bottom. So now I'm going to do is just combustion test the cell here just to get some combustion readings on the meter. I'm going to let this run for just a second before I do my combustion test again because I don't need to see that peak CO reading normally if I'm on a gas furnace it doesn't really mean too much of anything. So I'm going to go ahead and push start here and I'm just going to slip this up inside a cell, find a cell here, and in just a second here we're going to start to see, I'm going to scroll through so we can see our, uh, our O2 and our efficiency, so we can start seeing our O2 drop down and our efficiency coming up here. We'll let this stabilize for just a minute. Now again, this is combustion efficiency, so even though this is an old, what we consider 78% or 70% efficient furnace, you know, because we have the standby losses here, it's still going to be about 80% combustion efficient. And this is pretty normal. And if I pushed uh, any of the arrows here, I'm going to go through, just scroll through some of the readings just for the heck of it here. 
You can see now we've got our instrument temperature, down again our excess air, CO2, CO at 13 parts per million, efficiency at 79%, back to that upper set, stack temperature about 463, CO, uh, our draft reading from earlier, our fuel pressure reading from earlier, our CO undiluted, 24 parts per million, O2 back at 9.3. When I push stop here now, I can print out all these readings, and I'll go ahead and print that and show you and what we get on the reading now when we have done all the tests. So now we have all the elements of a complete combustion test, and you know, this is a multi-cell furnace. It's an older one, so we'd actually want to do this test four times, once for each burner in each cell. But you can see right here, again, we got the Testo 310, the model number of the machine, the serial number, a place here to write our name and address and phone number, the date and time that the test was taken. Uh, you can see it was configured for natural gas and the ultimate CO2 reading would be 11.7%. And now we have all the elements of the test completed here. We have our O2 at 9.4, our CO, raw CO reading at 14 parts per million, our flue gas temperature at 476 degrees for that cell, our efficiency running at 78.9%, our ambient CO at zero, our ambient temperature at 78 degrees, our draft reading at 0 .063, our excess air at 72.4%, our gas pressure at 3.57 inches of water column, our CO2 at 6.45%, and our CO undiluted at 27 parts per million. If this is an oil appliance, we'd be able to record here our smoke number for the oil and our second smoke number. This is a European standard, so just don't worry about this right here. And then obviously you can put your request for questions and a phone number down here at the bottom. Okay, so hopefully now you have a good overview of all the features of the 310. We covered how to do the ambient CO test, how to measure draft, and how to measure fuel pressure, and how to get all those recorded and printed out on your printout when you want to turn it into your customer. This is Jim Bergman with TrueTech Tools. Thanks a lot for watching.